This is the best shoe you've never heard of. But with an excellent P-Bax midsole and a surprisingly comfortable upper, the Topo Cyclone 2 deserves a spot in your running vocabulary. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about the Topo Cyclone 2. Now before you give my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Topo for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for this pair of shoes. However, nobody's paying me to make this video or to use this shoe, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Topo Cyclone 2. Two. First, let's go over some specs. This is a full p backs powered midsole. There's nothing but p backs in here. That's going to be the attention grabber, and it is also the star of the show. They've got it set up in this shoe with a 28 millimeter stack height in the heel with a 5 millimeter drop, giving you 23 millimeters of that wonderful p but goodness in the forefoot. Now, to protect that midsole from, from the roads, there is a very thin layer of outsole rubber that's on here with a lot of cutouts and some exposed area of foam that are going to pick up some scuffs depending on the types of surfaces that you are running on. But the outsole material keeps things nice and grippy while also minimizing the amount of extra weight they got to put on here. And not only is it about weight, but the extra rubber that gets put on an outsole also kind of dulls and deadens the experience of the foam. So I'm glad that they used a lot of restraint here and kept that rubber outsole to an absolute bare minimum. Moving to the upper, we have a anatomical toe box. There's plenty of room for your feet to splay out in the shoe, and it makes for a very comfortable daily trainer and workout shoe where you are not going to feel like your toes are getting scrunched. The upper is extremely comfortable. It's a new kind of engineered mesh that Topo is using, and it's pretty much see-through, but it's still strong and resilient to keep your foot nice and locked down during those speedier sessions. There is a light amount of padding that's on the tongue here, but nothing that's gonna get in the way. And overall, I found that it was very comfortable. There's a very light amount of padding through the heel cup to make sure that the shoe still fits a wide variety of heel shapes. But otherwise, it's an extremely floppy shoe, and that's something Something that I love pretty much in all my shoes when it comes to structure in the heel cup, but I especially like it for shoes that I'm going to be trying to run faster in. It just ensures that the shoe stays a little bit more nimble feeling and like it's a part of your foot. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a very lightweight. It's the lightest shoe that Topo makes and it tips the scale at 6.9 ounces or 195.6 grams. All right, so those are the paper specs. Let's talk about what it was like to actually put on this shoe and get some miles in it. I feel like this shoe is a great combination of my two kind of main sensations that I test for in a shoe, the squishiness and the spring. It's got a really nice amount of squishiness in terms of absorbing impact as your foot hits the ground, so it's not gonna be a jarring experience. It's nice and squishy, but you also don't get stuck in there. There's a nice springiness too as the foam decompresses. It lifts you and pops you right out into that next stride with a nice amount of pep and a lively energy. And the reason why this shoe feels so good is because they're using that wonderful p -Bax foam that is known to be a high-end premium type of midsole compound that typically provides for a very lively and fun running experience. But I think that something that we've also seen over the past couple of years is that Piba foams can kind of manifest in a couple of different ways. Not all Piba foams are created equal. And this one, I would say, kind of falls into the camp that's like kind of like what you wish Boost would be. Uh, in other words, it's like all the upsides of Boost, that springiness, that liveness, with none of the downsides. It's not heavy, it's not bulky. This shoe feels extremely light and it shows on the scales, but you also feel it on your feet too. It's an extremely lightweight and nimble shoe. I would say that it's kind of like, if you you took a Triumph 20 and a Kinvara and kind of merged those two things together, 
that's what this shoe kind of feels like. I feel like it's a really nice mix of cushioning for some longer miles, but also a lightweight agility for some of that speedier stuff as well. I think that if there was a little bit more stack height to it, maybe a little bit more kind of pop, maybe from a carbon fiber plate, maybe we're looking at a marathon racer, but as it's set up without any carbon fiber plate being just a pure P backs experience, I really like it for those sessions and kind of shorter, speedier options. But I've also really enjoyed it for all sorts of running from hill intervals to speed sessions to just easy runs. I even took it on some dirt roads and it was pretty good there, but there's definitely a lot of road feel to this shoe. I could definitely could feel a little bit of those rocks as I was running over them. But if you're gonna do mostly road miles in the shoe, which is kind of what it's intended for, I think that you're gonna get a nice balance of cushion while also maintaining that low to the ground road feel kind of sensation that I know a lot of you guys are looking for. Now, I know some of you might be a little bit concerned about the five millimeter drop. You might be used to shoes that have a much taller drop to them, but I don't really feel like this is a low drop shoe to me. It really just kind of felt like a lower to the ground shoe that just didn't have a very aggressive rocker to it. And overall, I feel like the shoe is really versatile even though it's geared more towards speedier days. The upper is just so comfortable pretty much at all speeds. And it was an easy shoe for me to reach for and feel very comfortable in no matter what the day had in store for me. I think that if Nike had made this shoe or if Adidas had made this shoe, for a lot of you guys, this would be your shoe of the year. I feel like it really is that good. But because this shoe is made by Topo, a brand that a lot of runners still haven't heard about yet. In fact, this is the first Topo that I've ever personally run in. I think that the superlative that jumps out for me in this shoe is that it's gonna be the most underrated shoe of 20. 23. All right, let's get to the summary portion where I try to consolidate and get a little bit more concise in terms of my thoughts. I think this shoe is best for runners looking for a speedy option for daily training and workouts in the same shoe, especially if you like a little bit more road feel, if you like to feel a little bit more low slung and closer to the ground. And I think some shoes that you could pair well with are two options I'm going to give you. One is going to be a racing shoe and one's going to be more of a max cushion shoe. For the racing option, I think that that you can pair it with the Endorphin Pro 3. They are using a very similar compound of material for these midsoles, and they in fact look very similar as well in terms of the way that the midsoles are kind of made of these beaded materials. The Endorphin Pro 3 is gonna be a very familiar but more upgraded marathon distance racer type of experience. And then for days when you wanna recover or just be even more relaxed, then I think that you can also pair this shoe well with the Triumph 20, another beaded foam shoe. Now, the Endorphin Pro uses Saucony's Power Run PB, which is also a PIVA based foam. And the Triumph 20, although it looks similar, it is a different material. It's a different chemical compound. It's Power Run Plus, but it's another beaded foam that behaves relatively similarly. I just feel like this one gives you a little bit more stability, a little bit more structure, uh, and a lot more stack height. So that way, on those days where you just need a little bit more comfort and a little bit more cushion and protection from the roads, that's gonna be a nice shoe to pair it with. So the three of those all together, I think are gonna make for a really nice rotation of very similar feeling shoes that are each excellent at different paces and intensities. Now, let's talk about the buying guide for the shoe. The shoe's relatively new. It just released a little while ago and it retails for $150. And I really like that price. I feel like you're getting a great amount of value for what this shoe provides. But to compare it to some other shoes that are kind of doing similar things at a similar level, let's talk about two other shoes. The first one we'll talk about is another shoe from Saucony. It's the Endorphin Speed 3. I feel like a lot of you guys really enjoyed this shoe. And the moment that I put on the Topo Cyclone 2, I instantly thought of the Endorphin Speed 3. They both have like a very similar amount of squishiness and response and peppiness that I think a lot of you guys are gonna find enjoyable, whether you're doing a speed session or you're doing an easy run. Now this shoe does have a plastic plate in it and it's a lot taller of a shoe and it's geared a little bit differently, but I do think that this shoe competes really well in the same kind of space. This shoe, 
you know, I thought it was 160, but I'm looking at it now and it's, I don't know if the price went up or what happened, but uh, it's now retailing at 170. So it's about $20 more than the Topo Cyclone 2. And depending on what your preferences are, that may be worth it for you, but it is a noticeable amount of difference. Now, if we want to go the other way and find a shoe that's even cheaper than the Topo Cyclone 2, another shoe that I think that can compete with it very well is the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel version three. Now this is a very different type of foam than what's in the Topo Cyclone two, but I feel like these two shoes behave very similarly. Both of them have very floppy heel cups and pretty generous amounts of space in the toe box. The Topo is gonna have a lot more room than the Rebel is, but they're also both shoes that feel very low slung to the ground and give you that road feel. I think that the Topo Cyclone 2 is a little bit more springy where the Rebel 3 is a little bit more squishy, but just by a touch. But I think both of those are very comparable shoes. The Rebel 3 comes in at $20 cheaper though at $100. 30 bucks and for what it's worth i do think that the rebel 3 looks a whole lot better than the topo cyclone 2 if you're talking about also using the shoe for some casual wear as well so those are a couple different options for you to pair with or consider against for the topo cyclone 2 but it is a shoe that since I started wearing it, I really haven't been able to stop talking about it in the live stream. I'm really excited about the shoe and it's one that I keep wanting to reach for again and again. Hopefully you guys will try it out and maybe for you guys too, this can be your first and favorite topo. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by that live stream that I was talking about. I do it Monday through Friday right here on YouTube over on the Kofuzi Run Cub channel. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. And that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?